If you're looking at scaling to seven figures, I mean, best online course hosting platforms and softwares is really important and it should be important to you and your business. Welcome back to an all new episode on the Litchfield Media YouTube channel with your host, yours truly, Melissa Litchfield, ad agency owner, marketing guru for online course creators, digital product based businesses, and online small businesses as well. In today's video, we're chatting all about the best course software. Which one is the best fit for your business industry or niche? Which one is the best for where you are at currently in your business? You may be more of a newbie when it comes to business or you may be a little bit more advanced. We're gonna chat about which course software and our platform that I personally love my honest opinion. I'm gonna tell you what course platforms that my clients personally use because I do run an ad agency for course creators. So I've been able to play around in the back end of a lot of them, but I'll tell you my clients' personal favorites and which online course platform will actually help you make more money. This is kind of a trick question. This is really, really is. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. All right, let's chat about different course platforms and the most popular ones. There's probably way too many for me to look into, research, etc. We're gonna talk about the most popular ones. Let's also chat about what particular features are the right fit for you. Some questions to think about. One, will it potentially host your videos? Two, is there additional fee for storage? That is something to consider and think about. Three, Will you be able to integrate your domain and host all of your course material on like a specific domain? Or is it kind of just like, do they have to set up their own login account information to even access that? I feel like that is a major barrier when it comes to enrolling students into a course platform. If they have to create an account first in order to even access it, it creates that barrier to even, you know, start consuming the content. And I think the biggest question is what sort of course platform is going to the, be the best for your students to learn from you? That is the most important thing. Okay, so if you are on the more newer side to course creation and you haven't actually created a course yet, you probably don't have any course students yet, but you wanna start creating a course. One tip of advice here, I encourage all my clients and potential clients to create a paid workshop first, where you are basically taking some sort of amount. It could be super low if you wanted it to. I think 27 is a good start, but a 60 to 90 minute workshop where you're teaching one specific thing to your paid workshop peeps. Then from there, you can take the workshop and basically create some sort of passive workshop or online course from there. So essentially what you're doing is you're proving a course, a topic that people actually pay for potentially down the line, right? So that way you can also expand from that initial workshop idea and then create a full blown course after that. That is my biggest tip for you. I wouldn't even enroll in a course somewhere first. I would host a workshop on Zoom or whatever other platform that you're using to host video calls and then I would charge for it. So like if you can't get people to pay for a $27 workshop, you may need to do some more audience building first. Now let's say you are a little more advanced in your business, you have sold a course or two, but you're looking to fully build out a one-stop shop for all of your course materials and your videos. The most popular software to date, I think is still Kajabi. Now, Kajabi is really popular because it is user-friendly. There's a learning curve with most course platforms because there is typically so much going on in the back end. And Kajabi is kind of like one of those all-in-one softwares. So if you wanted email marketing, I think they even offer webinars on a certain plan now. Course hosting, it will host all of your videos. You can customize, you know, like funnel pages and whatnot with a custom domain but you'll also be able to collect leads, you know, via a form. You'll be able to create landing pages and sales pages. 
it's again, an all-in-one software. And I think that's why a lot of course creators lean towards it. Let me tell you why it's not my favorite. <laughs> It's not my favorite because of the back end user interface. It's not super friendly to customize and build pages just from, you know, a tech standpoint and a funnel integrator standpoint. It's a lot harder to navigate the back end and connect all the pieces. I wish it was a little more user friendly on that end when it comes to like the actual interface and building funnels. However, front facing with your students, people rave about it, right? It's easy to consume the content and it's easy to navigate the different videos, the worksheets, the PDFs, whatever you're including in the content. And they kind of set it up like Netflix. So when you're done with one particular video, the next one is kind of like queued up and ready to start playing. So Kajabi is a fan favorite. A few of my clients still use it, but I feel like most of my clients have kind of moved away from Kajabi. And those type of particular clients are making multiple six figures and up. One of my longtime clients loves Teachery. She has been with them since the beginning. I think that's a great like starter platform too. So like Podia, Teachery, those are great for like brand new, you know, to course creation type of style of business where you can create you know, it will house and host all of your videos. But I believe with Podia, you can create, you know, specific sales pages for your courses as well. It's almost like a preview, you know, into the course. It's not a true dedicated sales page that you can create in Podia. And there's a lot of these softwares have limitations as what you can do with them from a design point or a design aspect. So Podia is really friendly for newbies. And um, I also mentioned Tea Tree. I think Ific is a really popular one that's a fan favorite. What I don't love about Think Ific is the fact that, again, when you have a new course student, or say you wanna offer a course for free, there is a barrier to them actually enrolling because they have to create an account first before they can even check out. So I would say from an actual like bottom of funnel completion, where we're talking about people actually enrolling into your course, you wanna make it as smooth as possible. And for whatever reason, they haven't updated that process to where you wouldn't need to necessarily make an account first. Obviously, if you already have an account, a Thinkific account, it's a lot easier for that person to enroll. Same with Kajabi. However, don't quote me on this. I think they have rearranged some things, but from my last recollection of what you can do in Kajabi, you do have to create an account first before you check out. That may have changed. So again, don't quote me on that. Hi, are you an agency owner, brand new to the agency business model, looking to build some solid foundations for your new agency? Or maybe you are a solopreneur looking to scale and grow your done for you service provider business. Or maybe you don't even know where to start. I own a digital advertising agency called Litchfield Media and I have helped several other agency owners grow and scale their agency this year in 2023. This is a different type of business model as opposed to a coaching business model. So you're in the right place if you're looking to grow and scale into an agency business model, or if you already have an agency and you're looking to start automating some administrative tasks or onboarding some new people, I have an awesome mini mastermind that you guys should check out. Check the link below in the description of this video. Now I wanna kinda of chat about like what's the best one in my opinion and I'll start a little bit with some background story of how I started and which platform did I eventually choose on. So when I first started my business, we're talking you know less than six figures in the first year, probably didn't hit six figures in my business until month 13, right? So it was a little bit over a year, but I started out with, I think I started with, I started out with Member Vault. Member Vault has evolved a lot since 2019 era, but that's what I was using initially. And it was very inexpensive to even get started. It would house all of my video and course material for one low monthly cost. I eventually then moved and migrated everybody over to Kartra. Kartra is an all-in-one software. I still miss and love different features of Kartra, but I do feel like the page load speed was always like a huge letdown because in terms of conversions and from a marketing standpoint, 
you want the page load speed to be super, super fast. Since it's an all-in-one software, of course, I was using the option to build my own pages. You can build your own checkout pages. You can, you know, depending on what plan you are, you can have up to so many contacts and you can have so many memberships or courses. I think it was three max. And then you can have only one domain. But I was on Kartra for a good two years, probably before I switched everything over to Active Campaign and Thrivecart, which Thrivecart does have the cart portion and they also have the learn portion, which is like course hosting portal. So anyway, started with Kartra. I still love and miss some features about Kartra. I'm actually still an affiliate and I still get affiliate revenue <laughs> from Kartra. So I will still recommend Kartra if you're looking for an all-in-one software. It's slightly cheaper than Kajabi and from a backend funnel building integrator perspective, it is pretty easy to navigate once you learn how everything's set up. So if you're familiar with the way that Webinar Jam is set up, it's the same company, they're like sister companies. So if you've ever set up a webinar and Webinar Jam before, the back end of Kartra will look very, very familiar to you. So in a sense, it's almost like you're building the funnel steps backwards. So that is Kartra. Thrivecart Learn is one of the newer favorites. I discovered this back in, let's say 2021. That's when I made the full switch is when I had like a mini course on Clubhouse. <laughs> yes, I was one of those people that made like a course like three months after using it, but I was really obsessed. So I decided to make the switch to Thrivecart because unfortunately with Kartra, when you're building out an SLO funnel, so more on that probably in a different video, but it's a low ticket offer funnel with an order bump and a one-time offer after that. With the order bump, there was no option in Kartra to accept PayPal. And as a marketer, I know that I can increase the amount of conversions that I see with offering PayPal as a payment option, especially for the order bump. So in terms of collecting payments via Kartra for that particular offer funnel, I would have had to only have like Stripe as the option and I knew I would have been missing out on those additional conversions in addition to offering PayPal at checkout specifically for the order bump. So made this, um, I didn't fully switch yet to Kartra, but I did sign up for Thrivecart. What I love is that it is a one-time fee. So it was around six to 700 bucks, but it's a one-time fee license use, you know, to use the software. You don't have to pay monthly payments. You literally pay for the software once, never again. And then later that year in 2021, in October-ish, that's when they rolled out Thrivecart Learn. So it's their course hosting platform, but there's a couple downfalls. It does not host our actual videos, but I was already paying for Loom, like five bucks a month. So what I do is I just pull the embed code after I upload my videos to Loom after they're recorded, pull the embed code and pop them into the Learn course portal. I did upgrade to Learn. I think it was like 250 bucks at the time to get like the additional features of Learn that's not already included in the, you know, base pro package of like Thrivecart. So that is one downfall. Um, you can sync a or integrate a domain. You can integrate a domain with Thrivecart Learn. The one other downfall is that, you know, students can't actually comment on the course itself on the video. And you can't interact with them because obviously there's no comment feature. But coming from my own experience in using Kartra for a few years, I had never had anyone comment on any of the videos. <laughs> so I felt like that wasn't a huge deal to me. As long as people can access the video, download the PDFs and workbooks, which comes in, into my next point, is that there is really no hosting of files with Thrivecart Learn because it's such a low introductory one-time fee they want you to use their own hosting system. So if you already basically pay for Vimeo or if you have Google Drive, essentially what I do is I just pull the Google Drive link and I pop it into Thrivecart Learn. So that's the course hosting software that I use now. Thoroughly recommend it. I enjoy it. It's easy to navigate. You can set up order bumps, one-click upsells. You can redirect to a different URL after someone purchases. It has a lot of functionality in terms of funnel building, integration, and tracking. And that is what's key 
for me in this stage in my business. And also I would recommend this for you if you're looking at scaling to seven figures, if you're already at multiple six figures, tracking, funnel building, and integration of specific things or apps is really important and it should be important to you in your business. Okay, Thrive Card is also thoroughly enjoyed and loved by a lot of my clients. I will say that some people have different email software providers, but most either have ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign. But again, that's a whole nother video. The last thing I wanted to chat about today was back to um, the question of, you know, which one is the best course hosting software that's gonna help me make more money really does not matter. The type of software that you have your course hosted on does not directly reflect or influence the amount of revenue that you will be making from that particular course. Keep that in mind. It's all about how you market it and it's all about in your messaging, right? And how well you can speak to your ideal customer's pain points to show them the value that you actually do provide a solution and value in this actual course that you're promoting. So there really is no best software to actually generate more revenue for your business. A lot of these softwares will help automate a lot of things, which then reflects back to the amount of time that you're spending doing some like admin stuff on the back end. So that will eventually save you time, yes. Okay, that wraps it up for this video today where we chatted all about the best online course hosting platforms and softwares. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.